Meanwhile, well, maybe it was crypto it was a hot thing in 2022. Now, of course, the hot thing is AI. And we've all been playing with it, talking about it. Now, Microsoft is reportedly upgrading its search engine with it. The generative AI, of course, ChatGPT, DALI, other AI tools have got us all pondering kind of the implications, the use cases as we create text, we create images, videos, software, code, music, 3D models. My next guest is thinking on this more than most and been investing in the space more than most. NFX general partner James Currier is here to explain, well, the fact that back in October, before we all sort of got completely engrossed in it in various Twitter trends, you said that the biggest change to the internet is already upon us and you said it was AI in the applications. Just talk us through your thinking. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Um, you know, as, as you know, NFX is one of the largest seed funds in the world and our, our job is to be sort of on the front edge, and I would say this is on the front edge. We started investing about two years ago, but it really took off, as you said, about three months ago. So we're really early in this process. We're, we're heavy into it because we do think that it's going to affect every industry. Uh, so there's going to be a number of unicorns and decacorns built over the next four or five years in this area. And so we've been uh, investing heavily in it. Mm. And um, we, uh, yeah, so James, we published parts the, of it. Which are yeah. the most fruitful at the moment? Because, I mean, I can see copy editors and many people being somewhat concerned about their future job descriptions. But which are the most practical use cases right now that you've seen already the millions that flow into companies that are building in that space? Right, right. So on NFX.com, we have published the largest generative tech and generative AI market map out there. There's about 477 companies today, and it's growing every day. Uh, about 32% of the $13 billion that's already been invested in those companies has gone into uh, general AI, into general AI models that are now powering it. We think of this like we would think of fiber optics in the late 90s that laid the groundwork for the internet. And uh, going forward, we think that there's going to be more invested in the upper layers of that stack. And so um, we've, we think there are going to be three big winners. <clears throat> the first is going to be the companies that move very fast to build SaaS software to do things people would expect, like copywriting mm. or video editing. <clears throat> and we're seeing that already with companies like Jasper, who just raised $125 million to do marketing and copywriting. Uh, the second group is going to be companies that use generative AI at the core of things like marketplaces and payment structures, uh, but, not, but aren't exactly delivering the AI to the customer. They're actually building it in to create a more competitive business. Okay. to compete market. And then the third one is going to be the visionaries who do businesses that we haven't even thought of yet. Mm. And that's typically the way these things roll out. How do you seek out the visionaries to that end, James? I mean, I know what's interesting over at NFX, if you've got the FAST program, where basically you take a whole load of generative <laughs> technology companies, the founders there, you get them to pitch, and within a very swift turnaround, you decide whether they're a business model that you want to be funding. Is that the way to sort of find out where is it the cutting edge that maybe people haven't thought about the practical application? <clears throat> That's right. We, we've interviewed over 100 generative AI companies over the last two months, and we're getting a real good sense of where the things are moving and where things are, are getting a little bit stuck. Um, the, the thinking of the founders yet hasn't moved past sort of a lot of the obvious ideas. So in the market map, you've got 100 companies doing text-based stuff like Jasper and Copy AI. Um, they're all doing very, something very similar. They've got to take that next leap. And what we're doing in these conversations is to figure out who's got the ability to take that leap to the next level for what's going to be successful next summer and the end of 2023. Because what we're seeing now is sort of copycats of things that were successful a year, a year and a half ago. James, what's interesting about this FAST program is, well, the fact that it's FAST, the pace in which you're able to decide that you want to cut a check. I'm interested in, as we've learned some of the repercussions of all the money in the world and perhaps not some of the safety parts in place, the, the governance that we'd like to see at certain businesses. I mean, we were just talking about FTX. How are you ensuring that you're getting those sorts of rules of the road in place when you write that sort of a company money? Yeah, so the FAST program writes a million, a million and a half and $2 million checks to early stage startups with two people to 10 people. So we're not putting a ton of money into these companies, so we're not giving them so much that they can start behaving badly. The second thing is that we actually sit down with them and talk with them about how to publish and follow on their values and the things they're going to adhere to. Because look, generative AI, like the internet itself, uh, can be used for good or for ill. And whether it's you know racist or sexist comments, or whether it's going to be... Um, 
you know, using it to generate images that just are unseemly. You've got to have some rules of the road that you publish, you commit to your community, and then you want to behave along those lines. And we help the founders put those in place. I mean, yeah, boy, we just think of how Microsoft was slightly bitten by that AI generative function and the way in which, unfortunately, humanity used it to start splurging, uh, I mean, hate speech, basically. I'm interested, James, therefore, is, is there any, does this need to come from a federal level? Does this need to come from a international organization level to think about how we put the rules in place that we are building purposeful AI that indeed is a net positive, never in any way a negative contribution? Yeah, we think so. We think that it starts out with our community. Look, we want the generative AI community, the generative tech community to do a lot better job than the social networking groups did at laying out the principles and the values that they need to adhere to. Uh, and that's always the first step, because as we explore these technologies, we who are building the technologies understand their strengths and weaknesses the best. But long term, we do need to have federal and international uh, guidelines that we can all adhere to. And hopefully we're going to get that in crypto uh, pretty soon because we can see what the results of not having it is. Very briefly, James, when you're looking at all these different companies, where are they being built? Uh, we're seeing a lot of them in Europe, a lot of them in Israel, uh, but the most of them are being built here in the U.S. Um, on top of the great efforts that Google and OpenAI and others have done over the years uh, to, to build up a foundation of machine learning and artificial intelligence people. We've got a lot of universities here mm -hmm. who are putting out a lot of PhDs and masters in this area, and those people like to stay here in the U.S., and so we've got a lot of great teams going after this whole area, as we have for the last five or six years. It's just the processing power and the cost has come down so much in the last 24 months that it really exploded in the last three months. James, it's been great speaking with you. Thanks for taking us through what seemed to be pretty much a call ahead of the curve. NFX general partner James Currier there.